And, uh, and I have the pleasure to introduce our first speaker. And to, and to introduce this first speaker, I want you to do I want you to do one experiment. Think about what where were you doing 25 years ago? Where were you 25 years ago? Each one of us in 1993. Well, in 1993, the person who is going to be speaking after me was already publishing his first paper on CRISPR. So 25 years ago, Francis Mojica was among the first who was realizing that the prokaryotes were far more complex than we anticipated. Ten years later, he came across an explanation for an unexplainable repetition that he had been working for more than 10 years. And he came with this crazy idea that uh, prokaryotes, both bacteria and archaea, they had these uh, immune systems, acquired immune systems with a genetic basis to defend from the viruses. Took, a, took him quite a while to get his research published and eventually this, uh, this seminal, this pioneer contribution was published in 2005. Of course, later on, there were many other researchers and many other microbiologists like him that uh, would be contributing and were describing all the different compounds. And of course, in the recent years, we have converted this uh, basic research, this increasing knowledge into something which becomes an application, into a genome editing tool. But let's keep in mind that we wouldn't be able to be here in this nice parliament without the initial work of people like Francis Mojica. Francis Mojica was the first one to put us in this road that still is running ahead of us, and we here also because of him. So it is my real pleasure to introduce you Francisco Juan Martinez Mojica, Francis Mojica for friends and colleagues. He is a macrobiology from the University of Alicante. This is the southeast of Spain. Francis, it's a pleasure that you're here. Uh, good morning, though. Uh, um, I really appreciate the, the organizer for inviting me now after hearing uh, Luis Montoliu. You will understand why I always say yes when he asks me <laughs> about uh, coming to a meeting when he's, uh, where he's involved. Uh, I'm not going to talk about my contributions to, to the CRISPR field because uh, it was expected me to talk about CRISPR uh, technology. So uh, I'm not an expert of, on CRISPR technology. Uh, I, I, when, when, when you told me uh, that uh, the, 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 the issue I, I should talk about was uh, uh, CRISPR technology, I thought, why? Uh, it's probably much better someone that is using that technique. But after that, I, I realized that it's not such a bad idea. So I, I have a simple uh, uh, idea of how it, uh, this CRISPR technology works. So uh, probably you will understand much better uh, from someone that is not an expert on CRISPR technology. I, I know a few things about that, and I, I will present them to you. But before that, I, I would like to talk about the, the plain CRISPR not the CRISPR with uh, cheese and chives or the CRISPR with uh, salt and vinegar. That is the, the, the CRISPR technology. Just, uh, I, I would like to introduce you the, the CRISPR, the native CRISPR system, so you will understand what's the CRISPR technology much better. The, 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 the CRISPR systems are present in prokaryotes, exclusively in prokaryotes, uh, both in archaea and bacteria. About 50% of uh, prokaryotes uh, harbor at least one, one CRISPR uh, system. The, 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 the CRISPR are located in the chromosome. Uh, you can find one region or several regions in the genome of one of these prokaryotes uh, containing several repeats. These are very peculiar repeats, very short and regularly interspaced. Each of these units, repeated units, is called a CRISPR. So in between this CRISPR, there is uh, a sequence that is, uh, is, is variable, it's not, uh, it's not repeated, and uh, the, the length of these uh, sequences between the repeats is constant. 
is exactly the same in the CRISPR array. They are called spacers. And next to these CRISPR spacers arrays, you will find uh, a few genes encoding the Cas proteins. Cas comes from CRISPR associated. Sometimes you find only three genes, and other times you find 30 genes. Uh, so that the complexity of the systems is, uh, is quite viable. There are very simple systems and very complex systems. All of them will have uh, Cas genes, all of them will, will produce Cas proteins, and all of them will have uh, CRISPR arrays. But the identity of these uh, Cas genes and the, the sequence of the, the repeats themselves will, ver will vary uh, a lot between organisms. So now uh, a few uh, aspects on the, the mechanism of these CRISPR, uh, these native CRISPR systems. The mechanism is quite simple. Uh, it took about uh, five years to know how the systems work after we knew that the, the, they were, we were dealing with what they, they are, that is an immune system, as uh, you mentioned before. The, the first stage of this mechanism is uh, the, what is called acquisition of adaptation. So this uh, one of these, well, one, Two of these uh, Cas proteins are able to recognize a sequence that is called a PAM. This is a very important motif. We will talk about that later. They recognize a very short sequence of uh, two to five nucleotides in a fragment of DNA, usually sometimes RNA. And after that, these proteins will take a fragment of the DNA next to the PAM, PAM comes from protospacer adjacent motif, and the sequence that is taken by the system is called a protospacer, which is the precursor of, of a spacer. These proteins will take well, a fragment of the DNA next to the PAM and will introduce it in the, the CRISPR array in a process that involves the duplication of the adjacent uh, repeat. So we, we, we get a, a new spacer there, and after that, the cell is able to take that information, to copy that information in the form of an RNA that is processed by other Cas proteins uh, to generate these guide RNAs. You look at the picture, you realize that each of these molecules have the sequence of just one spacer. Then another protein will bind to this uh, guide RNAs and will look for PAMs once again in a DNA or RNA, depending on the case, and after that, we'll check for complementarity to the spacer region in the CRISPR array. And in the case the match is perfect or almost perfect, the uh, a Cas endonuclease that is, that is able to cleave that DNA will do uh, the job. This is a real image of uh, one of these nucleases that is called Cas9. You, you heard talking about that probably. Uh, this protein uh, clips uh, DNA after the recognition of the target guided by the CRISPR uh, RNA guide. So this, this is the mechanism of the acquired immunity system in prokaryotes that uh, uh, endow the cell with uh, an, a protection against viruses and other uh, foreign uh, molecules that get into the cell. Uh, they, the cell is able to take a memory in the form of spacers and use that memory to recognize the invader and kill the invader and stop infection in the case of viruses or destroy uh, plasmids that came come from other bacteria. So, uh, as I mentioned before, there is a huge diversity of CRISPR-Cas systems. Uh, almost uh, every month, uh, some an, a new system is discovered that involves the introduction of a new subtype of uh, within a uh, type that is within a class of uh, CRISPR-Cas systems. There are two classes of uh, CRISPR-Cas uh, systems, and now we are focusing on this this type two of class two. This involves Cas9 and a few more proteins. It's not the simplest one, but this one of the simplest. So there are a, a few French people uh, here in this, uh, in this slide. Uh, a few years ago, in 2012, uh, two papers appear 
that uh, were dealing with this system I just mentioned, the type two systems of Streptococcus pyogenes. And they just were playing, like uh, scientists used to do, uh, playing with uh, components, mixing components of the CRISPR-Cas system of uh, this uh, bacteria, mixing them in tubes with uh, water, salts, and DNA, a fragment of DNA, uh, just looking for the components of these systems that were sufficient and necessary to achieve something very particular, that was to get a cleavage of this uh, DNA in a given sequence. And they uh, find out that you only need two components of these systems, that is Cas9 and one guide. A guide RNA where you can design it, you can synth synthesize this guide RNA or order it for a few euros uh, in such a way that this guide RNA will have a sequence, 20 nucleotides, that will match the sequence where you want to produce a cleavage. So after a while, you get a cleavage as a fixed distance from the palm. So the only thing you need to get uh, a specific cleavage in a fragment of DNA is Cas9, the guide, and the presence of a PAM motif next to the place where you want to produce that cleavage. Also, the paper by Jennifer Emanuel and, and Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Emanuel and uh, Jennifer Emanuel, Jennifer Down and Emmanuel Charpentier uh, uh, claim the possibility of using this new tool to, uh, to use it as a uh, RNA programmable genome editing uh, tool. So uh, they, they proposed it, and the, the thing they had in mind was that you can transfer these uh, components to a cell, whether as a protein in the case of Cas9, an RNA in the case of the CRISPR uh, guide, or the, uh, in the form of RNAs, both of them, or the DNA encoding these, these sequences, that you can introduce it in any cell, any uh, prokaryotic or eukaryotic cell. And uh, there, the Cas9 guided by the CRISPR guide will go looking for PAMs, and after that, checking, as they do in nature, checking for matching of the, the spacer sequence in the CRISPR array in the adjacent sequence to the PAM, and after that, we'll clip that, uh, that sequence. When the, the Cas9 produces that cleavage, that is the only thing Cas9 does, genome editing can be uh, achieved thanks to the repair mechanisms of the cell. You have several uh, repair systems in any eukaryotic cell. Prokaryotes usually don't have that, and that's the reason why they, they can kill the, the, the infectious uh, element, the virus or, or the plasmid. But in eukaryotes, after this insult in the DNA, this, after this cleavage, the repair systems are recruited and activated to the site where the cleavage has been performed, and uh, one of these systems is this one that you have here, non-homologous and joining. This is a uh, error-prone system. It tries just to reattach the two, the two ends produced by the cleavage. And uh, it makes that with the uh, introduction of small uh, fragments of DNA, small pieces, uh, just a few whisper, or removal of those. This is, I insist on that, this is a random output. So usually, you will get a gene disruption after the action of this uh, system. This is out of control, indeed. Then, one of the very good things of the CRISPR-Cas9 technology is the fact that you can combine not just a single guide, but several guides. If you introduce two guides, you can get uh, using this, uh, this uh, non-homologous and joining mechanism, inversions of DNA, duplications of DNA, and also deletions of DNA. If you provide the cell, apart from the Cas9 and the guide RNA, with a, a fragment of DNA matching 
partially the sequence surrounding the place where the Cas9 is going to perform uh, to, to produce that cleavage, then you can uh, activate the, uh, the the other system, the other main repair system, that is the homology directed repair system. So in this case, you can program not only the cleavage but also the changes you can introduce here. With this template, the repair system will fix this break, will introduce the information you provided with the, the sequence, so you can get insertions of new, sequ new sequence. You also can get deletions and uh, small base mutations. As uh, uh, in the case of the, the other system, you can also use two, two guides or more guides to generate re gene replacements or large deletions of the DNA. So that means that you can do anything you want as uh, if uh, a word processor uh, were, were working on the DNA in the case of, uh, instead of a, of a text. You can change any information in the DNA using not Cas9 directly or exclusively, but the, the repair systems that act after the cleavage by Cas9. So uh, this was the theory and the reality uh, came in 2013, that is a, a few months after these two papers in 2012. Uh, Luciano, uh, Mara Fini, Fensank uh, working together, and George Charge in these two papers that were published by, by back to back, were the first reports where they showed that indeed uh, CRISPR-Cas9 and this system that uh, uh, developed uh, uh, Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Dauna, as well as uh, Rodolfo Barangu in the other two papers in 2012, really work in mammalian cells, uh, even in human cells, for genome editing. Not only work, but it was probably, uh, not without probably, is the best tool ever to achieve any uh, genome editing. And this is the proof of that. Uh, this is a, a graph where you can see the other main alternative for genome editing, apart from CRISPR, talents, and thin fingers. And this is the behavior of uh, the groups working with uh, these uh, talents and thin fingers after uh, CRISPR appeared in 2013. Anyway, um, Cas9 is a very nice tool because, because it cleaves, and after that the cell repairs and you can edit. But you can achieve also genome editing without cleaving. With Cas9 devoid of any nuclease activity, we're not talking anymore about scissors, we're talking about a protein that can be uh, guided by uh, uh, a molecule that, that is very easy to, to synthesize. Very easily you can move and drive this protein to any place in the genome. Uh, it's able to uh, find a target in the 3,000 million base pairs that we have in our genome and find these 20 nucleotides guided by the, the CRISPR RNA guide. And that's the, the, the best and the most useful thing of this uh, technique. If it cleaves, it's okay, but in the case you remove that possibility of cleavage, you can use this Cas9 as, a, uh, let's say, a transporter, as a carrier of any information. You can fuse, as in this case, Cas9 to any catalytic activity that modifies uh, DNA, as for instance, in this case, a citidine deaminase after modification of citidine by this uh, activity fused to dead Cas9, that is how it's called this uh, protein without nuclease activity, you can replace GCs with ATs. And with other activities, you could de do exactly the, the opposite. So you can edit without cleaving using this technique also. Many uh, organisms have been edited with CRISPR, successfully edited with CRISPR, and that includes from bacteria to plants, and of course also uh, uh, animals of all the, the main groups, including mammals and including some organisms that were reluctant to 
modification to editing by the previously available uh, CRISPR editing uh, techniques. <laughs> As it has been mentioned already, you can edit uh, 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 crops, you can edit uh, many uh, organisms, uh, almost any organism with uh, many different purposes. I will focus on uh, targeting animals and targeting uh, uh, human cells and targeting diseases. Uh, many genes have been identify as responsible for diseases thanks to the use of the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. Uh, many genes with uh, pathogenic mutations have been corrected or they have been deleted or they have been replaced. And uh, here you have some diseases uh, where the CRISPR-Cas9 technology has, has been successfully applied and this is an example I think uh, it illustrates what the power of the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. Uh, you look at this movie. This is a hair muscle uh, with a, a muscular dystrophy. It doesn't work uh, very well, but this is the same muscle after being CRISPRized, after being uh, modified with uh, CRISPR-Cas, where the, this uh, mutation that is the cause of this dystrophy is, uh, has been repaired. It's amazing. So this has been used in, uh, in somatic cells, also in cells of the uh, germline, in, in animals, and also in, in humans. Many uh, embryos, no, not so many, but just a few papers have appeared, the first one in 2015, reporting the modification of uh, cells of the germline, of human cells of the germline. And after that, other papers have appeared to uh, correct uh, pathogenic mutations, so just to study the, uh, the development of the embryogenesis in humans, or to uh, prevent infection by viruses, or to cure uh, blood diseases. Going uh, forward and further, the, this technology that is quite useful, useful for, uh, for uh, studies in the lab can also be used as a, a therapeutic agent. And uh, CRISPR-Cas9 has been injected to animals to treat many diseases. Uh, here you have a few examples uh, to uh, excise the HIV uh, virus to improve motor function. Uh, in uh, sclerosis, in some sort of sclerosis, uh, to uh, treat uh, hearing loss or to restore vision in blind animals, to ameliorate hemophilia, uh, to uh, stop muscular dystrophy, or to uh, halt the production of uh, brain destroying uh, proteins in the Huntington disease, as a few examples. And furthermore, this technique has also been applied as a therapeutic agent uh, to uh, humans. Uh, there are, as far as I know, about 20 uh, clinical trials, either uh, underway or, or planned for the near future. Most of them are uh, intended to cure uh, different kinds of, uh, or tra tra treat uh, several kinds of uh, cancer, but there are also others uh, focusing on, on blood diseases or to the removal of, uh, of uh, uh, viruses. Uh, most of them are ex vivo, but uh, some of them are also in vivo. So, um, talking about the drawbacks and the negative uh, or aspects of the limitations of the, the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. CRISPR-Cas9 technology is not perfect for genome editing. Uh, even though it has been evolving in prokaryotes for about 4,000 million years, it has evolved to get a, a very efficient defense mechanism against viruses, which is not uh, uh, exactly the same. <laughs> it's not at all the same than getting a, a perfect tool for genome editing. So one of the limitations, if you want, of this uh, CRISPR-Cas9 technology uh, that is absolutely necessary for the immune uh, 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 system of prokaryotes is the requirement of a PAM. So that means that you can edit any segment of the DNA as far as there is a PAM 
sequence next to that. But the pump sequence is not always the same. That means that depending on the Cas9 and the origin of the Cas9 uh, system and the organism, different uh, sequences uh, next to the target are recognized. You, you have here a few examples. And you can also engineer uh, Cas9 proteins that usually recognize uh, NGG uh, to uh, recognize the different sequences. So that's not really a limitation, you can solve it. Another uh, important drawback of CRISPR-Cas9 technology is the possibility of, of targets. In fact, the beginning at least, uh, people said that one of the, the cons of, uh, of uh, CRISPR technology compared to other uh, genome editing technologies was that they had more of targets. Uh, okay, anyway, that this, uh, the, the, the off-target uh, means that you program the system to go and target a given sequence that match the, the, the spatial region of the, the guide. But this system uh, tolerates mismatches, so it can go to other places where the match is not perfect and produce also binding initially and cleavage afterwards. Anyway, uh, this was apparently a problem initially. Now there are high fidelity uh, uh, Cas9 proteins that uh, uh, do not tolerate uh, a single mismatch in the target. So that they are very uh, specific uh, Cas9 uh, proteins, even though they usually reduce the, the, the efficiency of the activity. They are very specific, but they are uh, just a little bit less uh, active. So, but, but the idea, you have several problems, you sh uh, should get a protein that solves all those problems, and that has, has also been achieved with uh, CRISPR-Cas9. This is a very recent paper where they had, have get a CRISPR-Cas9 variant that uh, tolerate variations in the PAM, but do not tolerate variations in the target, which is uh, wonderful. So in the, with this version, you solve the, the, the two limitations or the two uh, drawbacks. This is just one example. There are many more. Anyway, and the other problem uh, that is uh, uh, it's not related to the CRISPR-Cas9 activity, but to the repair uh, parts of the, the genome editing uh, version of mechanism is the, the possibility of getting unintended changes in the, the, in the target. Not just because uh, they go to other places, not, it's not the off-target problem, but the on-target problem. You can get, just because of the presence of this let's say, the, the error-prone, the, the system, the, the, the random uh, output of the, this non-homologous and joining system, that you can get variations in the, the mutation or the editing of any target after cleavage, and you can get uh, different uh, cells in an organism with different uh, modifications. That's really a problem that should be solved looking at the repair systems, not at the, uh, the Cas9. Anyway, I think this is a very recent paper where they uh, modify the approach or the strategy with Cas9 that facilitates the, uh, the, the specific modification of the other system that is the, the homology uh, repair or directed system that is, is more easy to control. But anyway, it's quite difficult to avoid this other repair system introducing random modifications. Um, a very recent limitation uh, uh, that has been uh, uh, shown in these uh, papers is the uh, immunity, the induction of the immune response in the host. This is uh, uh, both, both elements, the, the guide RNAs and also the Cas9 protein induce an immune response in the host. In the case of the CRISPR RNA, this has been solved just modifying the one of the ends of the, the guide, so fixed, but uh, we are still waiting for a solution to this other uh, problem. 
many people uh, in a study have shown to have antibodies against Cas9 of Streptococcus uh, pyogenes, that is uh, uh, the bacteria from which Cas9 uh, is uh, used used by the majority of uh, genome editing uh, groups. And the other is the, the, that from uh, Staphylococcus aureus. Both are pathogens and both uh, induce an immune response during infection, and many people have already antibodies against them. So in a, in a therapeutic application in humans in vivo with CRISPR-Cas9, this CRISPR-Cas9, the activity will be reduced and even you can get problems due to this uh, immune resp uh, response. But uh, that only means that you have to check whether the patient has antibodies against these uh, this Cas proteins. And in the case they have it, you just have to take other Cas9 from other organisms and that's it. There are many Cas9 uh, <laughs> in organisms, they differ in many different properties. All of the Cas9 that have been tested uh, derive from organisms that we, the macrobiologists, have been able to grow in the lab, but there are many more that uh, have not been grown. These are uncultivated organisms. We only know about 0.1% to 1% of uh, microorganisms or bacteria and archaea in nature because we only have been able to grow this tiny proportion of microorganisms in the lab. And now, thanks to the, the bioinformatic uh, advances, we can get from nature new proteins, new Cas9s, as these ones that are uh, completely different to those that we know so far. So we have uh, a, a, a large uh, toolbox of Cas9. We can choose different Cas9 from these uh, environments, synthesize them, and, and test whether they work uh, better or not than the, the ones we know, and, and probably they are not, uh, uh, they don't have this problem of uh, immunity of generation of antibodies. All the time we have been talking about the, the, these uh, type 2 systems that involve Cas9, but there are other class 2 systems that instead of Cas9 use uh, CPF1, now called Cas12, and other proteins. All of them rely for cleavage of DNA on just one protein, a single protein, and this uh, CPF1 has been harnessed to genome editing, successfully harnessed. That uh, CPF1 have also been produced uh, for these uh, modifications and other applications of CRISPR-Cas9 technology. Uh, they sh show very interesting differences and properties that uh, make them more useful in some situations or in some type of cells of organisms than, than others. One of these systems, uh, uh, I, I already told you before, the mechanism usually recognizes and targets DNA. But one of these systems, in fact, this one, targets and cleaves RNA. This has opened a new way to edit. Not DNA, but RNA. You can edit RNA. You can change the, the, let's say, the courier of the information in the DNA without the need of uh, producing a permanent modification of the genome. And this has been applied also to treat uh, some pathologies. Uh, very recently, this is a few days ago, uh, a new subtype of this type of uh, uh, RNA targeting systems has been used uh, for to, to treat uh, uh, frontotemporal dementia, just uh, modifying the RNA instead of the DNA. Well, uh, this is the situation nowadays of uh, genome editing. This is the situation of uh, uh, the techniques. We don't know what's going to happen, but we can guess is, uh, this is going to, to keep growing. Uh, uh, probably hand in hand to, uh, with, with CRISPR, with the ad advancement of the CRISPR technology, but I'm not really sure about that. 
there are many more CRISPR cas systems in nature that have to be tested. The ones we have now are really great, the best compared to others. We will get probably improvements of this technology. We will find out other uh, alternatives to this uh, CRISPR-Cas9, CRISPR-CPF1, uh, etc. But I, I guess uh, what is going to happen is something like this. It's going to grow much faster even than the, the, the growth of the CRISPR uh, technology. And the reason is that I'm a microbiologist. Bacteria, <laughs> in general, prokaryotes, are very powerful. They have amazing tools. And you are just starting to understand how they defend from viruses. We only know a system in prokaryotes that is really an adaptive immune system. That's amazing. I can tell you. <laughs> when I discovered that, it was probably was the, the, the happiest day of my life, just because uh, I, the biology, uh, probably uh, people working with CRISPR technology is very, very happy because they have a, a tool. But uh, if you think about the fact that prokaryotes are able to remember, to keep that memory of infections and fight with against these, these invaders. That's fantastic. This is the, the only example of a Lamarckian evolution instead of Darwinian evolution. They are able to, to manage their evolution and the, the, to force the selection of the best adapted uh, and also uh, transfer this wonderful thing that is defense to the descendants. We, can, we can't do that. Uh, prokaryotes can do that. And this is the only acquired immune system that we have identified in prokaryotes. This paper appeared a few weeks ago. Ten, ten more defense systems just discovered in prokaryotes. We just know they are defense systems against viruses, but we don't know how they work. So uh, I'm pretty sure uh, genome editing is going to get uh, much better than it is right now. Uh, not just because of CRISPR, of course, also thanks to CRISPR, but also because I'm pretty sure if just one has given the CRISPR-Cas9 technology this wonderful uh, technique and the previous one restriction modification, everyone knows what uh, this, this meant for the, the development of molecular biology. Imagine what we can get from this 10 different systems from prokaryotes. So that's it. Thanks. Thanks very much.